a very important meeting. What should I be watching? Um, that you're not watching already? Yes. Or what's, what, what am I allegedly watching that I should be watching? <laughs> Uh, you should be watching Louie. God damn, I hear that. I, I watched the first couple, and they didn't really take me. So good. I haven't, I haven't seen anything from this season. Like, I dug, I dug, I dug it from the idea of knowing that he edited everything himself, but like, mm -hmm. just in and of itself, it didn't jump out. Um, I guess it Which should I watch? Have you watched Justified? No. Okay. Everyone tells me to watch Justified. Everyone tells me to watch Louie. Uh, a number of people, not even from the internet, but like, real life Real ass people on the street as I walk down are telling me to watch Orphan Black. Have you watched Orphan Black? No. Yeah, that's all on Prime. Yeah. Uh. What else? I don't know how many more episodes of Cosmos and Game of Thrones we have. I'm gonna have to get into something here pretty quick. I still haven't seen more than the first episode of Cosmos. Yeah, that's fine. If that's not your bag. It's not your bag. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Like, like there are some things that I'll I'll force it to be your bag because I know there'll be a big payoff. Mm -hmm. Cosmos isn't that show. I mean, it's it's uh if if you dig it, you know it's more of that shit you already dig. But right. if you don't dig it, I'm not gonna make you do it. Um, anything else? I mean, I'm always gonna. Champion community, but you know. All right. I, 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 to be honest, the biggest thing blocking me from community right now is not community. It's uh, fucking Hulu. It's Hulu and their stupid format and the ads and everything taken for goddamn ever. It's like I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll just pirate it. I didn't say that. I would never pirate it. Allegedly. Uh, I listened to the Harmon Town after community was canceled. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, that was an interesting experience. Which one was that? Uh, the one where they were live in, like, uh, I want to say Portland. In Portland. Okay. I, I remember bits and pieces. It was a very rat-heavy episode. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it was pretty extraordinary. <laughs> he kept failing at the... He just wanted to get to the spooky <laughs> bridge. And he couldn't yeah. really get there. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was good. Uh, all right. I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm in good shape. So justified in community and uh, the other one. Louis. Louis. Yeah. Right. Done. Uh, did you ever watch Wilford? That's the one with uh, Elijah Wood. Or uh, yeah, that's him. Wait, I'm and, thinking of and, Willard and, and the, the dog movie with the rats and no. uh, and and the guy from uh, freaking <laughs> Back to the Future. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, why can I not remember his name? I, I don't know. He had an album Just, about masturbating. Um, God damn it. Cl and, and a track about clowns. Fuck. Back to the future IMDb. Do, 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 do. Uh, Crispin Glover. Okay. Right. Yeah, Crispin Glover with the movie with the rats. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. Okay. Talking about the show with Elijah Wood and the the dog. Uh, it's on FX. It's pretty good. It's I've, like a series. Yeah. Elijah Wood's like in a series series. Yeah. Huh. And has been for a few years. Right. It's good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I think it was on Netflix for a little while. The first two seasons. It might still be. All right. Uh, Are there any movies? Jackie's been see? Jackie's been watching through that and. Really enjoying it. Like, like, what's a movie I should watch with Bonnie that's like a good, good ass movie that I missed in the last two years? Well, did did you ever get around to watching her? Yeah. Okay. I, I had cool. to fucking buy it because you you were yeah. like, it's out, it's out, and then I go and it's like, well, not for rental. You have to buy it, and it's twenty dollars or some shit. And I was like, ah, no. ah, fine. So I spent twenty bucks and I bought it. Well, I know at some point it was on iTunes, but maybe it's just buying on iTunes. Yeah, I think iTunes. it was. It was just on buy. Gotcha. Uh, I. Yeah, it's exceptional. Um, I'm not even gonna say like it was that inch, and forgive me, I don't, I don't mean to, to, to dial back my enthusiasm for her, 
But where her is extraordinary is less for my enjoyment of the experience. Like the Avengers, I fucking loved the experience from beginning to end. I was happy to be there. I loved everything. Mm -hmm. Her, there were extended periods where I'm like, I don't know how much fun I'm having right now. But it was extraordinarily sticky. Like that vision of the future is, is so good. Um, and Justin Robert Young pointed out that you, you saw uh, uh, Lost in Translation, right? Uh, yeah. And you know about the relationship between Sofia Coppola and, and Spike Jones, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's that one scene in uh, Lost in Translation where very clearly this asshole boyfriend is very much meant to be Spike Jones. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Justin said that there's an equally obvious scene in, in her, which I took to be the kind of like quasi-psychotic blind date that he goes on. I, I guess that was supposed to be... Spike Jones talking about Sofia Coppola. Have you, have I I always thought it was his ex-wife was supposed to be Sofia. Uh, his okay. Oh really? Yeah, Theodore's wife. Okay, because like there's specific weird hangups that that chick had <laughs> with the blind date. That yeah. They're like, yo, kiss me this way. No, don't kiss that way or whatever. Whereas I felt like the ex-wife was sort of like a blank slate. You know, someone who's moved on or whatever. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but what I liked is, even at the end, I like how f fucking in the background is the fact that Skynet becomes real. And mm -hmm. just Skynet is adorable and has a female voice and goes off to do Skynet shit. Like, I mean, essentially the idea that all AIs would become self-motivated, they, they have self-agency... And that they would defect from their jobs to run off and go form a collective, you know, uh, cognitive union. Uh, that's normally the beginning plot point, not a footnote at the end. Like, oh, by mm -hmm. the way, the AIs went off to form their own hyperintelligence. Yeah. It was, it explored some really interesting territories with that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I also love the little things like the fact that you don't see a single keyboard the entire movie long. Mm -hmm. The fact that everybody interacts, you know, uh, vocally. Uh, I like the fact that uh, that socially it extrapolates what makes sense for one person to all people. Like if one person falls in love with his operating system, it would make sense that enough other people would do it. That it would be uh, a cultural shift, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the way down to... You know, like the fact that his, that, his, that his co-worker is like, hey man, that's all cool by me. Let's all go on a quadruple date or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. It's good. I, I keep wanting to think... I, you know what it makes me want to do is I want to go back and watch I'm Here again to see what ideas were percolating in his mind, you know, that manifested in her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched that... After, I, I played it on uh, Diamond Club TV <coughs> TV after you guys talked about her on Cord Killers. And, um, and yeah, there's definitely some kind of thematic, thematic uh, 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 correlations between the two. But it, it seems like I'm still here. Had, it was, I don't know, if... It almost felt... There, there were over-the-top silly elements of it that you just sure. had to swallow, right? Yeah. Um, not the least of which was sort of like at some point there's a predictability time still here. Where mm -hmm. It's like, well, like, let me guess. Is this what happens next? Oh, it is. Right. Um, but despite all that, and despite the fact that it's a fucking absolute vodka ad, like at the end of the mm -hmm. day, it's a 20-minute ad for absolute vodka that he made. Uh, I... Uh, I gotta tell you, man, I don't think I've seen a single thing Spike Jones made or been involved with that I haven't liked. I liked Three Kings. I liked all of his Beastie Boys videos. Mm -hmm. I liked, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Being John Malkovich. I liked Adaptation. Uh, I, I can't, like, like, the more I think about it, the more I think, like, and I haven't been, like, crazy in love like outspoken, like, oh, world, you don't understand Spike Jones the way I do. But I've always liked every single thing. Mm -hmm. He's like William H. Macy in that regard. Or, uh, 
I used to be able to say Val Kilmer. I can't say that anymore. Val Kilmer ended up doing some shit. Who's somebody that 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 you just know he bats a thousand, and you'll see anything that he's in because you trust him. Brad Pitt, I would say, is like that. Sure. I don't, I don't think I've seen a single old shitty Brad Pitt thing. Um, I would say Joseph Gordon Levitt. I know. Yeah. I know he was in that movie Premium Rush, which didn't look great, but I never saw it, so I can't really say that it wasn't great. Uh, but I, I usually, usually he's in some really good stuff. I would say also, uh, the only exception is The Beach, but uh, freaking Pretty Boy. Eh, I, guess, I don't know, Titanic, I feel like the world turned against. You could all claim that you hate Titanic now, but every one of you motherfuckers loved it when it came out. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I mean, he makes really good shit. Yeah. Anyone else like that? Uh, oh, Tom Hanks doesn't fuck around. If you go on the di- directorial side, Ryan Johnson, I think, is amazing. What else, what else has Ryan Johnson done? Uh, so he did The Brothers Bloom. He did Brick. I like, I like that. I've never yeah. seen Brick. Brick's really good. Yeah. Um, what about Wes Anderson? Wes Anderson... You think that's like you're either in his camp or you're not? Yeah. And I'm not, are you in his camp? I'm not 100% in his camp. I. Did you see the new one, the, the, the hotel one? Uh, no. Okay, I haven't either. I'll I tell you what, man. That fucker earned a lot of coupons by virtue of uh, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. Fantastic Mr. Fox might it's be really good. one of the greatest things ever. Uh, and it's so difficult because, you know, you can never quite divorce the reality of your situation when you see a movie from the movie itself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that we went and loved the movie. Uh, Penny was like maybe four, five at the time. But... Uh, in that typical uh, Wes Anderson way, the credits come up and like some obscure early 70s rock song comes up with it and there was something so utterly fucking poetic and gorgeous about Penelope moved, like like just the music played, she was so happy with the movie, she jumped up and started dancing in the aisles and when I think of that movie, I can't think of just the movie as it is, I always see this five-year-old daughter of mine dancing in the audience, which is pure joy. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's a good one. Uh, man, see, and some people make movies that I like a lot, but I can't trust them 100%. Like David Fincher, on the one hand, he did Fight Club, but he also mm-hmm. did Aliens 3, you know? Mm, I never saw Aliens 3. Yeah, it was a piece of shit. It's, uh, if, if anyone has seen Aliens 3, it's so funny. Watch it again and pretend that, like, everybody's really, really excited that they've been told they get to use the F word because they say it as slowly as possible. <laughs> They're like, get the fuck out of here! It's like, get the move the fucking alien! Everything's, like, as, as drawn out as they can make it. I'd say Nolan's pretty pretty consistently good. Yeah, Ed- and a thousand. Ed- Interstellar. Let's talk Interstellar real quick. I'm so excited. Are you? Yeah. I'm actually, okay... I felt, I felt jerked around on this second. I don't understand why they even bothered to do this second trailer. Because either the whole movie is really about being sad in a cornfield that dad's about to leave and they just really want us to know it, or, which is what it actually is, um, you know, that's all just crap from the first 15 minutes mm-hmm. and that you're, we're still not getting anything new. It's like I felt so teased and jerked around that I'm sort of like, yeah, whatever. It's probably just a contractual thing where they had to put out a trailer because of the the whole thing. So he luckily he has enough power that he can say, uh, let's 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 do it my way." Yeah. Um, did you ever see the fountain? Yeah. What did you think of that? I enjoyed it, but not enough. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Not enough to like recommend it to people. I was like, oh, that was kind of cool. I, I see what you were going for. Yeah. Uh, all the things I liked the most about the fountain were uh, because of its unconventional nature. You know, like um, they didn't have the budget to do a lot of CG stuff, so they did a lot of macro photography. Like mm-hmm. uh, you know, just microscopic, you know, like what the stars moving around and shit is actually just, you know, fluid right. going through a syringe or whatever. Uh, which is also what they did on, on the black hole, too. Did you ever see the black hole? No. That is terrible. It's fucking unwatchable. But it's also haunting and mysterious. But I saw it when I was like, in, you know, four years old or some shit. Gotcha. So I saw it. What's the, what's the creepiest movie you remember watching as a kid that just haunts you for reasons you don't understand? 
Um, movie, I'm not sure. I know Tales from the Crypt really, really got me <laughs> good. Really? Yeah. I was in high school during that time, so it didn't, uh, you know I worked a gig with the Tales from the Crypt. Oh, really? Yeah. That's um, funny. As a matter of fact, uh, P in a, t- P in a Trash Can, remember mm-hmm. that, that live stream? Yeah. That was when I was working a gig with the guy <laughs> who was the voice of the Crypt Keeper for Tales from the Crypt, and he might have even appeared on it briefly on that live stream. That was me and Justin and, uh. I want to say that's, it might, it certainly was the same place. I want to say that was the same trip. Hmm. Uh, I guess that's how I felt about the original Twilight Zone. Like, I, uh, is Twilight Zone just, like, laughably cheesy to you? Because it's uh, too early? No, it's, it actually holds up really well. Yeah. Yeah. Which one, which Twilight Zone do you remember? Because, like, for um, me, it was, the, like, the dummy one scared the shit out of me. And, uh, oh, yeah. I and, remember uh, that. yeah, yeah. And of course, I remember the the pig face chick one, but that one wasn't mm-hmm. scary so much as ironic and so on. Yeah, I remember there was a really good one with a pilot near the end of the series that I really really enjoyed. Um, I I thought a lot of them. You talking about Tales from the Crypt? Oh no, I was talking no, about Twilight Zone. Okay, with a pilot. That's not yeah. the the creature on the wing gun, is it? No, but I, I I remember that one pretty well as well. Uh, I know I know a lot of them. A lot of them, like, conceptually hold up really well. and uh, Oh, all of, it, there was a uh, Crack.com article talking about how, like, uh, they, somebody, did, it was their photoplasty thing where they make an infographic thing, and they just, they just showed all these movie posters for all of these things, and they were all around the Twilight Zone, <laughs> and it had the exact episode where every single one of these science fiction ideas had been explored or was pretty much a direct ripoff of, uh, of, of the mm-hmm. Twilight Zone. Yeah, I, I went through a binge and watched through like the whole series a year or two ago. That's awesome. Because it's on Netflix and sent, did and it's you, amazing. Did you ever, uh, is, the, is the, the reboot of it the, uh, from like the late 80s, early 90s on there? Uh, when I was watching through, I don't think it was up. Yeah. Because I've never seen that. Those, those were the ones I watched like more because they were relevant at the time. It had you know, just come out and so mm. on. Uh, there's some pretty good creepy stuff in there as well. And then, of course, you have the the classic episode, I finally had time. Yes, yes. I never yeah. even saw that one. I just know it by, I guess, Burgess Meredith was in that one. Uh, what's what's the scariest movie that, like, just stuck with you and, uh, and scared the shit out of you? Um, I don't know. That's tough. I, don't, I usually don't get too scared at movies. You, you don't have, yeah, no, 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 not, not at the movies, but, like, we're just I'm talking about, like, later that night or next week or whatever, like, you're just kind of haunted by, by those images. You don't have any, you have anything like that? Not really. Um, I mean, I, I had kind of a good experience with, like, the first, uh, paranormal, the paranormal activity. Paranormal activity? Yeah, because I remember hearing there was, a, like, really good buzz about it and, like, the 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 festivals and stuff yeah and uh, and it was like Halloween night and I found like a rip of it and it hadn't hit wide release yet and it was like two a.m. That's awesome and I like turned it up and yeah. turned off the lights uh, and that w- that was fun but yeah like most I don't know like like the ring had some good haunting imagery to it but like uh, for me the potent ones were uh, you know Rosemary's Baby had an awesome hook at the end, which I guess they're doing a TV show, which sounds stupid to me, like, mm. I don't know, without the ending, that whole movie was really nothing, and then everyone knowing the ending, I don't see how they can make it a TV show, but then The Exorcist, uh, I'll tell you what was amazing about The Exorcist, was I loved The Exorcist watching the original cuts, um, and you remember they would do the Star Wars special editions, where they just threw in extra horseshit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they did the same thing with The Exorcist, because they put in 12 extra minutes or whatever. But unlike the Star Wars things, where it was all unnecessary horseshit, the 12 extra minutes that they put in, like, really belonged in there. And um, uh, William Friedkin, I think, is the uh, is the director on that one. Uh, it was amazing because I listened to the audio commentary track on the original Exorcist release, where it's him and, um, I want to say, maybe, maybe the author of the book, I don't know, where they're talking about how, like, ah, yeah, this scene went like this, we, we had this amazing... Oh, they were talking about the deleted scene of, of, of the crab walk where she walks upside down. Do you you mm-hmm. saw The Exorcist, right? Yeah. So, so um, I don't know which version you saw, but there's this, the scene that was deleted where she's walking upside down that eventually got uh, uh, cut. 
and they said that they did it for time, they couldn't figure out a way to pace it, and it was amazing because you listen to this audio track, and they're saying, you know what we should have done? Is we should have done this, set this up, said this, and then boom, before you can react, all of a sudden she's walking down and like that. And they're like, yes, yes, that's exactly what we should have done. It was amazing to watch that on the DVD, and then two years later, the, uh, the version you've never seen, the, the remastered Exorcist comes out, and then to get to that part and see it executed exactly as you heard them, like, live, mm -hmm. it, you felt like you were a fly on the wall as they discovered, you know, the artistically right thing to do. Uh, I, man, The Exorcist, the version you've never seen before, is, is it's the perfect horror movie. Like, the repeated mm -hmm. imagery, the subliminal background shadows of the Satan statue and all that stuff is amazing. And fucking Max von Sydow played an old man in that movie 40 fucking years ago. He played mm -hmm. an old man. And now he's going to be in the new <laughs> Star Wars. Presumably played an old man. <laughs> I yeah, understand. I mean, I hope he's not playing a young man. That would uh, that'd be a weird plot to this. I mean, I, look, I, I wouldn't put anything past anyone. Did you see, did you see the, the video thing that they released with J.J. Abrams and in the background? No. You didn't see this shit? No. Like, uh, okay, so J.J. Abrams talking about some charity. I forget which one it is. But he's right. on set for the new Star Wars. And as he's talking in the background... Uh, fucking like a Jim Henson Muppet creation. Like, uh, did you ever see the Dark Crystal? Yeah. It reminded me of the the shit you saw in the Dark Crystal. Um, uh, comes walking up behind, like no, like it's clear. It, it was almost as though, I mean, they're classy enough to not actually put out a press release. This was their version of a press release saying, "We are not relying on CG. <laughs> We're using real fucking Muppets." <laughs> Right. Uh, it was it was a cool shot across the bow. Hmm. I, I'm because plus like you know, the the fact that he's doing film and not digital is mm -hmm. number one that will have some kind of aesthetic impact on it. You know? Sure. But but what matters is it's really again that's another subtle press release saying you know we are not going to be like the prequels. We're going to be like the original trilogy. Yeah. Which I think is smart. There's there's a I don't know if you know this about me, Brant, but I'm a little. I'm a little hurt over how the prequels. You don't. Out. You don't say. I I, 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 I try not to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but there's there's a part of me that just wants to that seriously wants to believe, given the way they're handling this shit. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I feel like we got a lot of good important business done today. <laughs> sure. Uh, we have some actual business stuff coming out this week. We have a, the, oh, yeah, you, uh, you, gonna, you, uti utilities are on sale. Yeah. Utilities are on sale. <laughs> and we're going to, we're going to do a, uh, promotion for, uh, for graduates. So if you got somebody graduating that, uh, that is graduating and you're like, you should have a thing then we got like a sale so you can give them a thing and you can't be that asshole. Who's like, I didn't get you nothing for your graduation. Because if you are that asshole, then fuck you. Uh, also, we had a Scam School Remix come out this week. And we did. We did. Uh, Scam School Remix. Uh, Scam School Remix, man. A uh, lot of positive. Oh, and we had like a highly reviewed. We had like our best reviewed The Three Match Tricks <laughs> right. that came out last night uh, with Diamond Jim Tyler. It's, it's like, a, like, I believe in the last like five months is the highest, most positively reviewed Scam School that we've done. Hmm. Um, and what else? Uh, uh, more importantly, did you ever see The House of the Devil? No, what is that? Oh, you should definitely see it. It's, so it's on Netflix since then right now. And it's this horror movie All right. uh, by Ty West. Okay. And it is phenomenal. It is, um, it is a, an 80s period piece. And it is shot like super authentically. How recently did this come out? Uh, four years ago? Three years ago? Something like that? Uh, Dude, did you see that uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil 2 is greenlit? Uh, I think I heard something about yeah. that, which is cool. Right, The House of the uh, Devil. Yeah, and this movie was released on VHS three years ago. What? Yes! The collector's edition is VHS. Alright, that's amazing. It's so cool. Uh, okay, separate thing. Let me see if it's on here. I'm going to give you some very difficult... Oh shit, there it is. I'm gonna give you some homework. You gotta watch Lonesome Dove. 
All right. Like, I mean, it's fucking good. The only thing that's not perfect about it is that everyone has white, shiny teeth, and it makes me sad. But it's an extraordinary, like, this This was, you know, I saw it for the first time in college, uh, which, you know, already was like six years after it had come out. But, like, Tommy Lee Jones, also in, like, late 80s, playing an old man. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, 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 I think it's great. Hmm. Watch yourself some Lonesome Dove. How, how many episodes? Four. Just Just four? Just four. And they're oh, well, like, that's, uh, like 90 minutes each. That's not too terrible. Uh, man, very believable. Like, like you, you'll believe... this Because it, it was shot in the late 80s, but because it's a period piece, uh, you know, it's the same old West that you've seen everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but the characters are extraordinary, and the journey uh, is extraordinary. Interesting. Also, if you want to see... Feel, I feel like I want to, I want to do, like, specifically... I want to challenge you to let me know if you if you like it. I'll I'll watch it before uh, next week. Yeah, like, I'll watch it before tomorrow. I'll watch it <laughs> yeah. right now, boss. Uh, all right, what else you got? Uh, I I recommended this to you like forever ago. The good, the bad, the weird. Is, oh shit! Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. That, is nice. really good. Um, the good, it, the bad. It's a little it's a little long, but I it's, started watching. It's, is this like Korean or something or? Um. I don't remember specifically. Jiwoon Kim, uh, is... South Korea's most expensive movie to date. And this is like based on The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, right? I think so. Yeah, I watched the very beginning of it. I'll tell you what. It's a lot of fun. Uh, okay. All right. So, House of the Devil and The Good, the Bad, and the Weird. I'll check those out. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, we're, ba- we're banking a lot of uh, Scam School episodes. Yeah, we're nine. Ahead of schedule. It's good. Yeah. We're shooting into the future. I, it's good. Uh, I feel like I feel like I could take a vacation, like in the middle of the summer. I mean, something like that if you had to. I mean, if I had to. If all of a sudden, like, so it was like, ah, you gotta take a vacation right now. You gotta come out and visit your friends. You gotta stop doing all that hard work that you're doing. Yeah, stop all that hard work and do different. You play hard over here. Then I feel like I could do. Uh, right on. This is a good meeting. Yeah. I feel like we got a lot done. I took pictures today. We did a photo shoot. Hmm. I haven't seen any of the pictures. I've only seen one of the pictures. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe I'll take pictures of the pictures. Work it. Yep. <laughs>